Welcome to the HomeKit Show. This week, I'm doing a HomeKit iOS 14 special. I'm going to talk you through all the new features, but not only that, some tips and tricks to get the best out of Apple's new HomeKit update. So in this video, I'll be covering adaptive lighting, the new layouts, how to get the best out of it, activity zones, and facial recognition, along with details around HomeKit doorbell support. Welcome back to the HomeKit show. This channel is dedicated to everything HomeKit news reviews and tutorials. So if you are new around here and you're visiting for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and also hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. This week's show is sponsored by SwitchBot, who are a manufacturer of an interesting smart product called SwitchBot Bot. The Bot is a clever device that can be attached to most appliances or switches to turn them smart. For instance, you can use it with a coffee machine to trigger your machine to dispense coffee, ready for when you come into the kitchen or wherever your coffee machine is. I'll also be doing a giveaway of some SwitchBot products which have been kindly supplied via our sponsor. There's some links in the description below that take you to the company's web store if you're thinking about buying one of these. So thank you very much to our sponsor, SwitchBot. So first of all, starting with adaptive lighting, already found in smart home lighting such as LifeFX and others, HomeKit will now give native adaptive lighting. It will be possible to automate color temperature changes for HomeKit compatible lights throughout the day. HomeKit will gradually change the lighting for daytime hours, but also transition to warmer lighting at nighttime. This is similar to the night shift feature found in Macs and iOS devices. Now, as you're probably already aware as of September 2020, this feature is not yet available, but I just want to clear something up because there's a lot of speculation of why it's not available. So the reason why it's not available is because it requires the manufacturers to update their own firmware to be compatible with this new feature within HomeKit. A lot of people are saying it's to do with future betas that need to be updated, and that's simply not the case. So if you're hoping for a beta version to come out, for instance, 14.2, then this is not going to bring it. However, Philips U have confirmed they're working on implementing this into their lighting products, but they've still said it's coming soon. And with anything that says coming soon, I would take that with a pinch of salt until it's actually delivered. So hopefully that clears things up and people are fully aware of what's going on. So looking at some of the OMAP changes in the OMAP, Apple has redesigned the status overview to include a circular icons for accessories that are in use. This new view replaces the text descriptions that were used to relay the number of lights, for instance, that were on in your own. In iOS 14 and iPadOS 14, the text area has been replaced with a set of circular icons that represent home status at a glance. Now this is available both in the main home app and also in the rooms. Users can tap directly onto these icons to quickly change accessory status like blinds, but it's worth pointing out that these are controlled all at once. So if you click on a status bar that has lights, for instance, it will turn off all the lights in your home. However, there's a tip here. If you long press the icon, you can get a detailed view of all the devices that are in that particular group. So if it's lights, then it'll give you a view of all the lights and you can individually interact with them. Also another change when accessing home settings, this has been slightly altered as well. Within the home icon in the top left hand side of the app, it now gives you a pop over menu that includes a quick way to jump between rooms, but also access the settings and the room settings. Another change is in the HomeKit accessories, you can now see a list of suggested automations and existing automations. This also includes quick toggles for enabling or disabling those automations, just like with Control Center. This makes it easy to track down specific automation and and it also makes it easy to temporarily make changes or disable things. Another change is the talk button for camera live views. It's a lot larger and a lot more prominent. This shows a big yellow button right underneath the view of the camera and it allows you to interact with it a lot easier. In addition to the changes that have been made in iOS 14, iPad and Big Sur have also got some update. Both of them have gained a new sidebar view. Upon launching the OMAP, 
you will see a list of all your rooms within the home, as well as a quick menu to access automation screens and home screen. This sidebar unfortunately only works as an easy way to jump from room to room you cannot drag accessories into rooms or edit the bar in any way. Setting up accessories has also seen a revamp in iOS 14 for HomeKit. It does look a bit different and it's gone with a similar UI to what you would see when pairing a HomePod, AirPods or Apple TV. Accessory and pairing still begins with tapping the plus icon in the Home app and then by choosing Add Accessory. It still brings up the HomeKit scan process. Then once you've scanned the HomeKit code, it will then display a large icon icon which will show you what type of accessory is to be added. Once the accessory is paired, you're then presented with a couple of additional screens that you would not have seen before that provide handy suggestions for automation, like having a light bulb on when you arrive at home, for instance, and scenes like turning off for movie nights. So you've got a lot more choice when setting up an accessory. If you do pair a HomeKit doorbell, you'll also get options for enabling HomePod doorbell support. And also if it's a HomeKit secure video doorbell, then you get the option to enable facial recognition for that particular doorbell. Control Center also gets a makeover with the latest update bringing support for favorites and most used scenes. HomeKit accessories are shown in the same icon sizing as other control buttons like screen mirroring for instance. Scenes in Control Center include items that mimic appearance within the home app so it all looks familiar. In addition to scene, Apple has included a button that is dedicated to all of your favorites that you have marked within the home app. Tap in this button will present you with a slick overview with a nice transparent effect. In this view, tapping an accessory or scene will toggle it on and off and you can also deeper dive by selecting a specific room at the top to access accessories that are not marked as favorites. Apple TV also gets some updates. HomeKit controls can now be found in the control center accessible by a long press of the own button on the remote. Tapping the home icon brings up favorite scenes which are displayed like they are in iOS but you can cannot make any changes to this list on the device with favorites coming directly from the iOS device that you're using. Favorited cameras are also available and if you've got more than one you can swipe through the cameras to see them and get a view of what their last status was. If you tap on the camera in this view it will open up in full screen live view along with audio which was not available to HomeKit cameras on the TV before. This is a great improvement. You can also deselect accessories from being included in the status bar by going into the settings menu and toggling it off within the relevant control. Now moving on to updates to HomeKit Secure Video. Apple's HomeKit Secure Video platform was launched back in iOS 13 and it provided notifications based on action within a camera's view. All this was managed by using a HomeKit hub such as an Apple TV, HomePod or iPad. The images captured by the camera are analyzed and it determines whether a motion event has taken place which includes humans, animals or vehicles. These recordings are then transferred to be stored in iCloud securely. However, in iOS 14, we get facial recognition and activity zones. Now here are a few tips before we get into the details. First, facial recognition and activity zones only work with cameras which are compatible with HomeKit Secure Video. You also need a HomeKit Hub and this needs to be run in version 14 of the relevant firmware. A common question or an issue that I'm seeing at the moment is people are saying despite being on the relevant firmware and everything up to date, they still cannot see activity zones and facial recognition. Now I found a simple reboot of your HomeKit Hub or Hubs fixes this problem. So you might want to try that and hopefully those features will become available. And my final tip, as at the time of this video, which is September 2020, HomePod 14 firmware is not yet available. So if you do have a HomePod and an Apple TV in your setup and the HomePod is the primary hub, this will drive all of the HomeKit secure video stuff including automations. So in order to get everything to work, then you need to turn off your HomePod for around five minutes to allow your Apple TV running tvOS 14 to take over as your primary device. Then everything should work as expected. So starting with facial recognition, the latest feature can distinguish between people in a camera or doorbell view and can provide notification that includes a person's name. An example of this would be a notification that states, 
John is ringing the doorbell. Faces are identified through name tagging in the Photos app, which are part of your iOS device. You can also control how HomeKit shares your photo library with facial recognition in your HomeKit home. So for instance, if your partner does not set it allow everyone in your home, then it will not share the facial recognition capture names with you and other family members. So this may explain if you're finding that people are not being identified as you may have not shared your photo library with everybody or other people might not have done the same. So it's worth checking that if you are having problems with facial recognition. If you do want to add a face that's not been recognized and it's not in your photo library, so for instance, a common person that comes to your door like a postman or a postwoman, then you can add someone by clicking on the person's face and then add a name. This will then be added to the known to household tab. In addition, when viewing the HomeKit Secure video timeline and it has recognized a face, it will show you a label with the person's name. Next up is Activity Zones. HomeKit users have been longing for native Activity Zones and in iOS 14, that wish has been granted. This will be useful for cameras such as a Circle View or the Eve Cam, which does not have native support for Activity Zones. The Activity Zone settings can be found in the camera's settings and it allows users to define which area in a camera's view will be used for detection by tapping the camera view to create a shape. This way I think it gives you a better level of control on creating the motion zone that you want. You can also invert the zone after it's been created so it only detects activity outside of that zone. Now a tip here, if you are planning on using the activity zones in HomeKit but the manufacturer's camera also has a companion app which has activity zones, then remember to turn off the manufacturer activity zones or if you've created any to delete them as this will trigger notifications and recordings. So if you find you're having trouble with motion being detected detected outside of zones, then this could be the reason why. So remember to turn off activity zones in the manufacturer's app in order to get the best out of it. Now, a popular feature that people have been waiting for since iOS 14 when that's announced back at WWDC is HomeKit doorbell chime support, along with how doorbells and home parts will benefit from facial recognition. HomeKit doorbell chime support is split into two categories with doorbells that support HomeKit and doorbells that support HomeKit Secure Video. For HomeKit doorbells that do not have HomeKit Secure Video support, the HomePod can still act as a basic chime. This option is available right in the settings panel for your home doorbell in the Home app. And if you have multiple HomePods, you can have them all chime at once right through your house. But for doorbells with HomeKit Secure Video Support, these take advantage of facial recognition. So when someone presses the button on a doorbell, the HomePod can announce who is actually at the door if it's stored in facial recognition. This is a quick demo of how it works. Someone who may be John Ratcliffe is ringing the doorbell. You also get a picture-in-picture -picture view on your Apple TV. If someone's ringing the doorbell, it will either say that someone's at your door, but if you're using a HomeKit Secure Video doorbell, it will identify that person's face if they're known to your HomeKit home. Now it's worth pointing out, there's a lot of people asking why HomeKit chimes are not working. The reason being is the HomePod, as I've already mentioned, has not been updated to iOS 14. So you've got to wait for that to be released. This is of September, 2020, but hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we're going to see iOS 14 come to HomePod. So that's all the things that are new in iOS 14 and HomeKit and all the tips to get the best out of it. So now let's take a look at SwitchBot, which has been supplied by our sponsor of this week's HomeKit show. So the SwitchBot bot are small and box shaped with a plastic build that doesn't feel or look cheap. It's a simple design with one mechanical arm that swings down and up to either press or pull depending on how you've set it up. They come in both black and white colors. I personally prefer the black one as it blends better with the coffee machine I've used it with, but the white one may look better with light switches or applications that I've got white design. The bot comes with two 3M stickers so you can attach it to a particular device or whatever you want. And you've got the second one as a backup. It also comes with two small sticky pads which have got like a loop which can be used if you're using it to pull. Bot can be installed on any button and most switches. Possibilities are really endless from light switches, appliances, buttons, 
different electronics or even computers or servers to turn things off. So it's got a lot of flexibility. I attach this to my coffee machine at home and it's been working great. You can also use the devices with Siri shortcuts and I'll be doing a full review of these devices and I will cover Siri shortcuts and all the other more advanced features in that video. So don't forget to subscribe from when that's released. So I said at the beginning of this video, Switchbox, the sponsor of the HomeKit show, a supplied two sets to be included as a prize. So two lucky winners will receive one white switch bot, one black bot, along with a SwitchBot Hub Mini. The prize amount is about £90, so it's a great price, so thank you for them for doing that. Entry is simple, all you need to do is follow our Twitter account, follow HomeKit, and also retweet this week's HomeKit show. All the links are in the description, which take you through to our Twitter account, and also the tweet for you to retweet. Also, the terms and conditions are also there. This giveaway is open to residents of all the countries that are coming up on the screen now, and the giveaway is open from the 20th of September right through until the 25th of September at 23.59 GMT time. And it's open to new and existing followers of our Twitter account. So thank you very much to our sponsor, Switchbot, for providing the prizes for this giveaway and good luck to everyone that enters. So that's the end of this week's HomeKit show. Hopefully you found it interesting. And if you have, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell button to be notified when new videos come out. Also, don't forget if you've got a question or comment, leave it in the comment section below and we'll get back to you. And check out our website, homekitauthority.com. Thank you very much. I'll speak to you soon.